they've got a bunch of uh, uh, blocks like this out uh, in, in the garage out back, and uh, uh, I'm going to set up to work on on the carving out here because it's too heavy to move this stuff around and inside. This contraption I'm using to move the stones is called an engine hoist. The mechanics use them to lift the engine out of a car, uh, move it to a workplace, and then uh, lift it back in. Um, it, it's a really substantial piece of equipment, but they're surprisingly cheap to buy. This one was new at Harbor Freight. I think it was under $200. Uh, they have a hydraulic arm that uh, uh, lifts up by, by uh, cranking. And then you set it down again by just sort of turning a little valve that lets the oil escape from the piston um, uh, set it down. Um, so basically anything you can get a chain around, you can lift up to about you know, two and a half or three feet off the ground. Here's a better look at that engine hoist. Uh, it, this one will lift uh, up to two tons with the arm extended all the way and one ton with the arm not extended at all. They're really cool. Uh, they sort of fold up to take up uh, about half or a third of the uh, sort of footprint that this one is fully extended. And uh, it only cost about 200 bucks, I think, at, at the uh, Harbor Freight. A real bargain and wonderful to have around the studio. You're about to get a good look at why you have to always stay out of the way of any kind of equipment like this. Watch what happens when it suddenly comes down faster than I think. It moved forward almost a foot at really high speed and real and a lot of power. If you're in the way, you get hurt. So I'm readjusting the chains a little bit uh, so it'll lift up level. Uh, it wasn't quite right, so it's sort of dangling at a weird angle. It takes very little effort to lift it uh, with that, that crank. I just keep pushing up and down on the lever, just a few pounds and up it goes. And now, I, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm, I'm now adjusting the, uh, the release more carefully. And you can see it, it, it goes down quite gently if you, uh, if you, if you don't snap the, the uh, knob too far. So as you can see, this stone is a little irregular. It's, a, you know, it's an irregular piece off of an offcut that was already irregular, and it has a bunch of spots on it that aren't very good. So I'm just going to try to pick the, the best orientation. i got to flatten it so it'll stand up at least pretty straight up and down. Um, so uh, this seems to have three good sides and one bad side, and both the bottom and the top of it are just a mess. So one of our jobs for today is going to be to just square it up so it'll, it'll stand up on a, on a work stand. So I've lifted it up a couple more feet and, I've, I, and set the, uh, the work stand under it with an additional little sawhorse there for, uh, just for safety. It, so to make sure it's not going to overtopple. So I'm just going to set it down with some uh, 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 two by laid down under it, so I'll be able to get the chains in and out, which will be important through the whole process. Now these chains are an interesting thing. Uh, chains are, are, are really strong. I think these are related, these are good for up to like seven tons or some, 7,000 pounds, I think this, this type of chain. But uh, you, you want, really want to divide that by, by a pretty fair number before you trust your life to it. So uh, I'm just also bolting this together with 3 8 inch bolts and washers and that also greatly reduces the uh, the real strength ideally you should be using official fasteners but for you know 1,000 pounds with a chain of this size and bolts of that size I'm pretty safe with uh, just using nuts and, uh, and and washers to fasten the chain together I do not recommend this unless you have a similarly huge uh, margin of safety You could do all this with other uh, fastening systems like webbing. You make heavy, uh, some kind of textile webbing that you can lift weights like this with. But um, uh, chains have the great advantage that when you have something bound up in chains, it, it can skid on a concrete floor relatively easily. So you, it, with this thing with the chains wrapped around it laying on the floor, I can, I can shove it around with a, a crowbar 
just by brute strength. It, it's, uh, it skids uh, really well on concrete. So we're done with the uh, engine hoist. Uh, I'm just going to fold it up and, uh, and put it away. It can actually go a little smaller than I'm going to fold it. Uh, it gets a little narrower if you collapse the, uh, the boom. But uh, it's really nice how small it folds up and you can stick it in a corner. It's also gratifyingly easy to, to move things even as heavy as this is a thousand pounds and you just kind of shove it around uh, with a crowbar. I mean, it's just an ordinary wrecking bar and I'm just, uh, you know, don't like where it is, you just put it under the, uh, under the edge and skid it sideways a little bit. And having it up on, uh, on these blocks makes that, definitely makes that easier too. So I just kind of bump it around a little so I don't I want to get it arranged so that a little bit's hanging off the end and I can square it up. This so uh, platform I have this on is built in a particular way. The 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 feet and the the rails on the top line up vertically, uh, and then the top overhangs those rails by exactly an inch and a half. So I can lay an inch and a half board on the floor, and it'll be perfectly plumb with the uh, uh, the rail above, or, or actually the edge of the, the top above. So I can use that now to sort of scribe a, a, a square line on the block that's perpendicular to the tabletop. And none of this is very precise because this has no flat sides and it has no square sides, but I, I'm just sort of by eye getting it so it'll um, uh, stand up visually straight up and down. Then I'm gonna take a uh, carpenter's pencil and just sort of scribe uh, a line around it that, that represents what I wanna flatten. Uh, this is pretty much a, a catch as catch can operation, not very scientific at all. And last, the moment of truth, I'm about to hit stone with a hammer for the first time. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a wide chisel. This is sort of a tracing tool and I'm, I'm scribing a line around it, just, just going over the, the uh, uh, pencil line uh, and I'm going to bash a sort of uh, line into it, a uh, V-shaped uh, line with this uh, chisel. That's going to, uh, for one thing, make the mark indelible and for another it'll, it'll form a, a place for things to start being cracked off it. As you can see, there's several inches of, uh, of stone that's, that's going to come off. Once I've got that, that uh, line incised fairly deeply uh, in the stone, I'm going to uh, use the chisel in a slightly different way, not to try to split stone from it, but to uh, hit it obliquely and try to knock off a big block with that line as, as the base of it. Um, uh, this is called pitching, and they make specific tools for it that look like chisels, but actually have a flat bottom on them. And you, you really just set them against a, a line that you've traced on the stone and give it a whack from an angle. Here, I'm going to give it one right here. And, uh, uh, and boom, see that big hunk just knocks off. And you see how neatly it followed my incised line. So um, it doesn't always work that uh, neat and tidy, but it did this time. And that's, that's very exciting when it does work. You can make most of this stuff too, by the way. My, my tracing chisel is just ground out of a, a, a brick mason's chisel. And so is my uh, pitching tool. Yeah, I'm going to do it again. I'm, I'm going to try to, um, I'm, I'm sort of deepening my incisions around the, the corner of this block, and then I'm sort of alternating that with putting the chisel at an angle and just trying to knock the whole block off it at once. It doesn't work quite as great as it did the first time, but it'll, it'll work again.
So that's about all I can really easily pitch off of this. I'm just going to take the uh, uh, the punch after this and just start worrying the remain the remains of this down just uh, by hand, just just uh, chipping it away with the uh, uh, with the trusty punch. It's kind of fun to do anyway. I like watching this stuff at high speed, just just chewing it off. Um, so you know we we removed like four, good four or five inches of, of stone here. That's, that's quite a bit. Um, now we, we could get fancy here and try to break this off, flip the stone over or something, but it's just not worth it. It's fast enough to just knock it all off this way. So I was having a lot of fun doing this, um, just sort of worrying away this, this stone. And then out of nowhere, I mean, you can see the sun is shining. Uh, beautiful day. And out of nowhere, comes suddenly the flood of milk. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, next time we'll finish up this uh, square in the bottom and still we'll on our way.